In this video, I'm going to share with you three techniques which should help you to enhance your creativity. We have finished the first animation challenge on the Animator Guild Discord group. I just want to congratulate everyone who entered. There are so many great entries, it was difficult to pick uh, a winner out of all of the entries. I also want to thank Isaac Rondu McNair, or just Isaac McNair, for helping me to organise the tournament. So thank you so much, Isaac. It was very inspiring to see all of the different entries and to see that there were so many different interpretations and creative approaches to it. My personal favourite was from uh, a user called a cow jump over the moon. Uh, he kind of made his explosion into a nice little story with loads of little jokes in there, lots of funny moments. Um, so that was my pick, I'll just show that for you here. And I've also linked in the description to the Imgur page where you can uh, see all of the different entries and uh, just have a look at them and be inspired. The winner was David L by public vote, so he's this month's champion animator. Congratulations to him. If you want to enter as well, you can. You can uh, join the Discord group, it's free, and it's like a little mastermind community of different animators where you can all help each other. And it's great experience, and it's, it's great because you can join a community of animators. So, link in the description, you'll be able to join the tournament, but you'll also just be able to join the community. So, I hope to see you over there. Now, on to the next section of the video. Part of what I do on this channel is take you through useful techniques, observations, research and experiments that I'm currently doing to grow and develop as an artist. One recent breakthrough I've made is through practicing lateral thinking. And I'm going to try and introduce to you today what lateral thinking is and explain it in my own words. If you're working in the creative industry or if you're aiming to have a career in the creative industry. Your long-term success partially depends on your ability to be creative and not just being creative on occasion when a coincidence occurs or when an idea pops into your mind. You'll need to be creative in high pressure environments where there are real consequences to not having creative solutions and in these circumstances it's so crucial that you have a methodology that you can rely on. More than that, creativity perhaps is one of the biggest factors in whether you're going to be successful or influential as an artist or filmmaker. The most successful people and the people who history remembers are generally the people who changed something and you can only change things by breaking old patterns and that is what lateral thinking is all about. Put in the simplest way possible, lateral thinking is deliberate creativity. Most of my research for this has come from reading the book Lateral Thinking by Edward de Bono. I urge you to buy this book, study it and practice the methods. It's a game changer, really. It's changed a lot of the way I think, the way that I approach problems in my art, in my filmmaking. What I'm going to explain to you here is just a sort of brief introduction compared to what you can learn in the book. And uh, I'm not an expert in this, I'm actually quite new to the subject. So there are two different strategies of thinking, vertical thinking and lateral thinking. They're both valuable ways of thinking, but we're almost exclusively taught in school how to think vertically or logically and we're not taught how to think laterally and that's because it's a fairly recent uh, discovery of how the brain works or how the brain can work and um, it, it's basically it's all been done by this guy Edward de Bono. Um, 
So to make the distinction more clear, vertical thinking has the goal of getting to the truth or the correct answer. And that is very valuable, but it's not the only way because lateral thinking has the goal of creating value, exploration and unlocking potential. So there are so many different areas you can apply these ideas to, but for these uh, lessons, I'm going to mostly be relating them to uh, filmmaking and art because those are the areas that I've been spending a lot of time in recently. So the first practical method I'm going to share with you is the generation of alternatives. That's the name of the method. Uh, so it's a simple method that's really helped me um, and it's explored in this book. Um, so the method is to, to set yourself a number of uh, potential solutions you need to get to when solving a problem. So you kind of set a quota that you need to fill. In my storyboarding process, what I do is for each storyboard, I create three iterations of that storyboard. And from there, I select which one is the best one. And it doesn't matter if the first storyboard that I create for that is uh, a passable storyboard, uh, I will still create the other two storyboards just to explore what other options are there. Before this method had been presented to me, when coming up with an idea, I would just come up with ideas until I found a good one and then I would stop. And this is, I think, what most people do. The difference now is that I will create whatever the quota requires of me. So if that quota is 10 ideas, I will have to create 10 ideas even if I create a very good idea. And this allows you to then explore all of the possibilities before then selecting which one is the best one. Um, so for example, I wanted to design this backpack and I could have just stopped at my first or second attempt. Uh, I instead set myself the task of creating nine different variations of this backpack. And even if I created a really good one on the fourth attempt, for example, I would still need to create five more. And if I hadn't drawn the first six drawings, I would never have explored what the rucksack could have been on eight and nine. So you can see how um, this has value uh, in design. Even if I didn't choose number eight or number nine, the work wouldn't have been in vain. Those numbers strengthen whichever choice I go for because now I know with more certainty that let's say number four is the my favorite iteration that I can go with. So this method scales pretty well. The more iterations you set yourself to do, the better it is, but also the more time it takes. So just be, uh, just set the amount that uh, is the most practical for you. I also apply this in story writing. So let's say I don't like this plot point that I'm struggling with, or, or maybe I'm just not quite satisfied with the ending. I now need to come up with five rough plots points that could take its place. As soon as you try this, you'll find that it's much, much more powerful of a method than just scrapping your ideas until you come across an idea that works. It's also much more effective in the process of obtaining feedback because you can present a catalog of ideas to someone and allow them to identify out of those options which is the most appealing out of all, out of, all of them. Whereas before, uh, if you're just throwing ideas until you find a good one, then you could only show them one the one idea that you were currently working on and they could give a binary yes or no response. Now, the next method, which is kind of attached to this generation of alternatives method, this is the selection of alternatives. So it's kind of the second half to this technique. So when you create all of these options, you then need a way to quickly and efficiently eliminate all options except one to move forward. The way to reach a decision about each one is to explore your thinking about it before reaching the decision. So you can do this by separa separating out the thinking process. For each piece, 
noting the positives, the negatives, and interesting thoughts slash questions that will help. We need an example for this. So in this animation, I had an idea for a shot which would be like an aerial view of the skier just after this one that you're seeing now. I was weighing up whether to eliminate the shot from the storyboard to save time. And so mapping out my thinking about this could look something like this. So under positives, well, the positives of having this shot in the film is that it looks nice. Uh, it's fun to watch, fun to draw as well. Like I would enjoy the process and therefore I think other people would enjoy watching it. And it emulates that kind of Red Bull style of uh, ski photography that I'm trying to portray. Now, the negatives. So it will take a significant amount of time, which I could spend on other shots, which are more crucial to the film. And also, the audience might find it boring if they've already seen the shot of him skiing from a different angle, or they might just, you know, they might find it tedious. So it's possibly going to change the pacing of the film, maybe make it a bit more drawn out. So that's another possible consequence. Now, for the interesting slash questions, the main one is that uh, the question was, does the film appear to work without the shot? And the conclusion I came to when I ran the test uh, with the shot and without the shot, my conclusion was yes, it does work without the shot. So my conclusion from the positive, negative and interesting points about that decision my conclusion was that I'll take the shot out and if there is a surplus of time at the, at the end of the, the production, I can reconsider putting it back in, but for now it's taken out. So I was able to reach that decision with a lot more certainty after mapping out my thought process in these three ways. You basically go through your options and apply this, you know, lay out your think way of thinking and that will help you get to a, a much more certain, deliberate answer rather than just allowing it to be on your intuition or how you feel that day, something like that. That's not a very good reason to, uh, to select something or to eliminate something. So if you've got more time and you want an even more thoughtful, thorough method of selecting from your options, Edward de Bono has another book which is specifically about this strategic decision-making process called The Six Thinking Hats. So I recommend you check that out as well. The next technique is challenging assumptions. So this is what I call, I've kind of renamed this for myself, called the zoom out questions. So the chances are when you're making a film or creative project, you're already thinking within a system. If you zoom out from that system, you can ask questions about the system itself. For example, I'm currently making a 2D animated short film right now. And with that come some assumptions. So the assumptions could be it's 2D, it's made using a computer, it will be shown on a monitor or projector at a specific aspect ratio uh, on the internet and maybe in uh, film festivals and film screenings. It's an audiovisual entertainment format and it uses an established narrative structure in my case. And within the narrative structure, it might be a two act or three act structure, um, something like that. You know, we could make all these different uh, points about it. And that just comes within, you know, when I choose to make a 2D animated short film, those are the assumptions that come with it. And when we zoom out, each of those assumptions can now be challenged in a variety of ways. And you can see how challenging these assumptions can break you out of existing patterns and create more options. For example, it will be made using a computer. Well, does it have to be made using a computer? Uh, what are the benefits of using uh, a computer? Are there ways that we can uh, involve the computer more? What would the benefits of that be? By challenging it, you get these extra ideas that are completely outside the box. At least I can explore that. So they don't necessarily need to have 
different answers from the assumptions, but you can at least check that those assumptions are there and should be there. Even if you don't end up changing anything, it gives you the certainty that what you're doing is the right thing. Uh, instead of the insecurity that you could be doing something but in an ineffective way, if you just check these assumptions, then it gives you more confidence. Now for this one, I do recommend that at a certain point, you, you need to limit how many questions you ask and on what occasion you ask it. Otherwise it becomes a bit neurotic. So maybe don't ask the question on a smaller level. Like, you know, if you're making a drawing, you might not need to ask these larger questions about that drawing. Uh, so maybe save it for the times where you're having to make a key decision, perhaps in the story, perhaps in like the format or something. Uh, you have to choose when, when it's necessary to use this method. The next technique is provocation. So this is bringing something new into the mix and having to adapt to it. I like to call it alchemy or juxtaposition. This is where you connect two or more random juxtaposing things to stimulate your problem solving and solution creating side of your brain. So this was the basis for one of my conceptual animatics which, uh, in which I connected skiing with sword fighting. I found two different things that I enjoyed, that I found interesting, that I found appealing and I created a connection between them. And once I had two subjects I was interested in uh, and decided to use the alchemy process, my brain naturally found ways to connect the two themes. And when I did so, I found that I naturally came up with an entire story to go along with that just by connecting these two very different themes together. And there are lots of other ways in which you can use it, but that's just an example of how I used it there. So word stacks are a great method. I won't go into it too much here, but I will link to a demonstration by Sterling Hundley on his ideation process. He's a, a very successful concept artist who I greatly admire and he showed his process for coming up with ideas in this video. So link to that in the description. Some other useful provocation methods I've used are, for example, uh, blind pointing to a location on a map and then generating word associations about that place and allowing yourself to pursue tangents about those words that you come up with and blind pointing to a word in a magazine and then juxtaposing that with your subject matter. I think that an important part of this is that you can commit to making ideas out of the juxtaposition even if it's uh, difficult at first. So one mistake I made was to create a juxtaposition and then change to a different one too early. Even if it's difficult, try to stick with it and see what you come up with. That's my advice for using that method. So there's a lot more I want to say about lateral thinking, but there just isn't enough time in this video. So if I find that people are interested in this subject, maybe I will release another video with some additional thoughts. Like I wanted to talk about how you actually might encounter resistance towards your originality and towards lateral thinking because it um, breaks certain conventions. So I would love to talk about that in another video if you guys are interested. So his other book, Six Thinking Hats, is also very useful. So you can check that out as well. But the main one I want you to check out it's called Lateral Thinking and I will link to it in the description where you can buy it. It's going to be an affiliate link so it will help me out and it will also possibly be a reduced price. So it's worth using the link in the description. And you can also watch his lectures on YouTube to get you started. If you want something a little bit more light, you can just watch his lectures and they're very good. I have a website called Animator Guild. It's where you can watch more of these kind of videos and also download my source files for the different animations that I've made as well as downloads, templates, audio files and there's also one-on-one -on -one tuition for if you want to learn animation. 
that's all over on animatorguild.com and I also have a Patreon so if you benefit from these videos you can help to support the channel, support the upload of these videos and in return you, you get access to a lot more content uh, than what comes out on this channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video guys, goodbye.